Welcome to another one of Believer's Fellowship's Wednesday's Word, and uh, we pray all is well with you and your family. Uh, since we still can't meet for our Wednesday night services, we uh, praise the Lord that we can bring our Wednesday night service in some extent to, to you in your home as you watch. And so uh, we uh, t today I'd like to bring to you a word from Ephesians chapter 5 that I believe will uh, be an encouragement to you. Uh, so if you'll turn to Ephesians chapter 5, we'll go a helicopter view over 24 verses real quickly just to kind of helicopter over it and then uh, be able to focus on just one verse uh, that we'll look at. So if you're looking there in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, uh, look at verse 19 is where we're going to begin as we Again, we're not going to look at each one of these verses in detail, but just kind of helicopter it uh, view for now. In verse 19 of chapter 5, we see about having that joyful heart uh, that also displays itself in song. Uh, in verse, verses 20 and 21, we see about being thankful and being submissive. In verses 22 through 32, we see about how to be the right kind of uh, wife or husband. In chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, we see about being the right kind of child. In verse 4, we see about being the right kind of father or really generally a parent. In verses 5 through 8, we see about being the right kind of employee. In verse 9, we see about being the right kind of employer. And so you can see all those roles, all those things that uh, uh, encapsulates uh, what the Christian does in their roles. Uh, but then when you look at that in detail, you think, man, those are some difficult passages to, to obey. I mean, being thankful and joyful, maybe even in times of, of bad circumstances. You're talking about being submissive when it's hard to be. You're talking about all the uh, things that the scripture says for a wife to be, all the things for a husband to be, all the things for a child to be, all the things for a parent to be, all the things for an employee to be, all the things for an employer to be. You think, man, those, those are some difficult things. I don't know if I can measure up to that. Well, before Paul ever writes about those things, uh, we need to look at the verse right before all that starts. Uh, you know, when you took classes in college, you know, you always saw there when you registered for it if the class had a prerequisite, uh, meaning that you had to take something or a certain class or classes before you took that particular class because it was required. Well, it's kind of like Paul starts out with this verse as a prerequisite before you're able to do all those other things that we just mentioned, and that's in verse 18 because we've started in uh, verse 19. So look at Ephesians 5:18 now where it says, Do not be drunk with wine, for that is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. We all have to be filled with the Spirit. We get the Holy Spirit when we're saved. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes in when we give our life to Christ. But then we've got to turn control com completely over to the Spirit. As the Spirit lives within us, uh, He's in us, and we allow Him to, to just take control over our life uh, and rule our life. And so here we see in this passage uh, the importance of that. Yeah. I'm not giving this devotion a title, but I, I do have something that I, I wanted to share, kind of encapsulate what I want to, to mention. It's basically in this little sign right here. It says, no matter how you feel, you need to be spirit-filled to be fulfilled. And so that's what I'd like for you to focus in on today, that no matter how you're feeling, uh, it's important to be spirit-filled so that you can ultimately be fulfilled in life. And so that's what we're looking at today as we look at this passage. You know, you begin to say, well, what is being filled with the Spirit? It's basically the Holy Spirit being in control of your life, uh, giving him that control the, that he should have in all areas of our life. You know, we use that term a lot, you know, when we talk about that person's just filled with anger. That person's just filled with jealousy. And what we mean is that emotion just controls them. Uh, it just takes them over because they're filled with that emotion. Uh, they're no longer in control, but that emotion has filled them to take over 
the control. You see where Paul gives the, the drinking analogy. He, he talks about don't be drunk with wine, and then he compares that to being filled with the Spirit. You say, well, why is that? Well, when, we, when people are filled with alcohol, then the alcohol begins to control their life. Now, that's why if people are arrested for a DUI, uh, they're drinking under the influence. In other words, the alcohol is influencing or controlling them to such an extent that they're not in control anymore, but the alcohol has taken over and is in control. And so that's why that analogy is there. You know, I, uh, Gary had mentioned last Wednesday about those LUCs, the life-changing units, about those times in our life where we get extra stress. Uh, obviously, this time we're living in, uh, many, many people are stressed out because of it. And if you look, and I believe maybe this is why the Lord led me this passage, you know, we see that one of the essential businesses are the liquor stores. And that just has baffled me of why on earth are liquor stores part of the essential businesses? And uh, if you look, um, I looked at an article there. It says the, set, the sale of alcohol at liquor stores and grocery stores have surged 22% for the week ending March 28th. 22% increase in sales. One of the alcohol delivery apps uh, that said, I don't use these, I was reading this, so don't imply that. Uh, their business has jumped uh, from this period last year to this period now in March, 1600% from that delivery of alcohol app. Uh, you know, what is it, you know? Well, people, when they drink, the, it, the control begins to take over and they indicate they feel better because something else has taken control. They've had that escape that they feel happens. You say, well, not everybody drinks to get drunk, but even as alcohol goes in the system, it begins to, doesn't just immediately have control, it gradually has control. Matter of fact, even our society gives it a number of what uh, is not allowed by driving, dri when they're driving F under the influence. In other words, our society says this much is too much. In other words, they feel like that's where the alcohol has even too much control, but it's always having control. And, and that's what the issue is. Don't let, don't get drunk with wine, he, he's saying, but basically let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let it control you the way, and I'm sure a lot of these people that he spoke to were in those kind of parties and get-togethers where alcohol did take control, and he was saying, don't do that anymore. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to, to take control. You know, I thought it's unusual. There's a, a liquor store not very far from the church, and even their sign, no, I didn't go in there, but their sign even on the outside and other liquor stores used the word wines and spirits, referring to liquor as spirits with an S. I thought that was, you know, I never thought about that before. You know, even as Paul has used that illustration to uh, show how the not being drunk with wine, but being filled with the Spirit, that that is even the, a word they use. But, of course, they don't go over all the negative things that can happen with being filled with those kind of spirits. You know, the alcoholism that it can lead to, the broken homes, uh, broken families, um, liver problems, health problems, all the other things that, that, that can occur when people uh, go after alcohol in that, in that way. And, but with being filled with the Holy Spirit, everything's positive. It's all good. Uh, everything's good about it. And not all these negative things that happens in, when the world turns, like it is now, to asking or having alcohol be its control factor. You know, one illustration I'd read was about, you know, the, the, the being filled is like putting your hand in a glove. You know, this glove would represent me or us as Christians. My hand is the Holy Spirit. What we want is the Holy Spirit to fill us, you know. But what a lot of people do is just let the Holy Spirit partially fill. In other words, here I've got my thumb in the glove and I've got my little finger, but these these two 
uh, they're not they're not filled and so I'm not controlling that aspect of my glove. The only thing I'm able to control is what I've filled in the glove. But if I go ahead and put my fingers completely in there, then I'm able to control the whole glove. That's what the Holy Spirit's looking for in our life, to completely control us. And that gives us that sense of, of fulfillment, that sense of you know, release that, hey, I'm not in control anymore. The Holy Spirit is in control of my life. I allow him to control every aspect of my life. And, and even when he does that, he gets complete glory from it. You know, if I was able to play the piano, which I can't, and I was to play it with this glove, and I did a great performance, you know, you wouldn't come up to me and say, hey, Pastor Tim, your glove sure did a good job. No, you'd say you did a good job, but it, it's really the hand in the glove that's getting the glory, what's controlling it. And God gets the glory from our life because he does what he does through us by being in control of our lives. And so I would encourage you to, and myself to what part of my life is Christ not in control of? And those will be the ones, the areas of my life that, that are not fulfilling. And you say, well, I wonder what keeps us from that. I believe it's just distractions. Uh, things in our life that become more important than the Lord, things that in our life that uh, we focus on more, uh, we don't give the, the Lord the attention and the devotion that we should, those distractions in our life. I, I think one statement that uh, John the Baptist made, I think is appropriate here in John 3.30, he said, he must increase and I must decrease. You know, we just put the Lord first and say, Lord, you're, you're in control of this life. And he'll show us those areas of our life we're not in control. A lot of those things are our emotions. You know, we, we get fearful or we get frustrated or whatever. It's like, Lord, or am I giving you control in this area? You know, have I surrendered as I'm just stressed out because I'm trying to take care of it myself? We let the Lord be in control of that and, and he'll take over. You know, uh, Yogi Berra was a famous uh, baseball player and uh, he was a catcher. And, uh, you know, catchers try to distract the batters. Uh, they may be talking about, you know, as they're batting there, you know, about their mother, or, hey, your shoelace is untied. And, and Yogi Berra uh, had Hank Aaron come up to bat. Of course, you know Hank Aaron, he had the home run champion of the, of the world at one time. I, I believe his record got beat, but he, he was a great home run hitter and he came up to the plate and Yogi tried to distract him. And you know, when you bat, you're supposed to keep the letters, the lettering that's on the bat in a certain position so that the bat doesn't crack and you're, you're holding it in the right way. And, and Yogi tried to distract him. He said, uh, uh, Hank, Hank, the, your, your bat's not turning. The lettering's on the wrong side. Hank, you're not gonna be able to hit it good. The, the lettering's not right. And, and boy, the pitcher pitched the ball and, and Hank Aaron hit it and off it went, home run. Hank Aaron went over to first and then second base and third, and he came into home. And as he touched home plate, he began to go to the dugout, but he stopped and he looked back and he said, hey, Yogi, he said, I didn't come here to read. You see, he came here to hit. And all those distractions were not distractions to him. He was focused on getting a home run. We've got to be focused on the Lord. All these distractions that's in our lives and our society and whatever, yes, they're real. And they're sometimes worrisome, but, you know, when we focus, you know, on the Lord, filled with his spirit, then we see the difference that that filling actually makes in our lives, and they don't get crowded out. You know, you've heard, heard the old saying or bumper sticker said, God is my co-pilot, or <laughs> really it's God is, should be my pilot. You know, we should could let him be complete control of, of the steering wheel of our life. And in times like this, you know, when... Stresses come, anxieties come. We have a tendency to grab that wheel from him and want to take over control when we need to give it back to him, those areas that we've given up, whether they're emotions, whether they're behaviors, whatever they are, God wants to be in control, and we can relax. You know how relaxing is it when you have somebody else driving, somebody else in control, and that's what the Lord seeks to do in our life uh, this being filled. Matter of fact, this verb that has to do with 
being filled, it it's actually means in, in the tense that it is, is be being kept filled is really the proper translation. In other words, you say, well, I was filled at one time, you control, but, you know, kind of like your gas tank, you know, you use it up, you got to get a refill. You know, yes, the Holy Spirit stays in us, but we've got to always be being kept filled with the Spirit. We can begin to take back control in our life, and the Lord wants us to have Him steadily and always in control. So are you, we need to always be being kept filled. That's a steady thing that's in our life that we should focus on, and it'll affect every part of our life and how we deal with things. And so I want to remind you once again that uh, what we started out with, no matter how you feel, because we're all feeling different things, you need to be spirit-filled to be fulfilled. And so I'd encourage you to do that. Also check every area of your life. What parts does the Lord not have control that he's able to control your life by being filled, completely filled? You see, when you have a glass, like when I get a glass, I, uh, I usually put a lot of ice in it. The more ice I put in it, the less water can go in it. The less of me that's in my life, uh, the more of Christ control. It's usually me in competition with him for the filling. Just surrender it all. Every aspect that keeps him from filling that glove of your life, just give up that control and see what a difference that makes in every area of our life, in, in your life. So I encourage you in there. Let me have a word of prayer for you during this time. Father, uh, we pray, Lord, uh, for I pray for each and every person that's listening, Lord. I pray that you would, God, they would surrender that filling of the Spirit, uh, Lord, in their life. Lord, and maybe if somebody's listening has never come to know you, to receive you as their Savior, and Lord, has never received the Holy Spirit in their life, they would do that even now and surrender their life to you. For those that already know you, that they would uh, give up that control in areas maybe they haven't given up and that they've held on to, and they would uh, be blessed. They'd see the blessing of giving control to you. And Father, we thank you for your goodness and continue to pray for our uh, God protection for each and every one, Lord, that you would walk us through this time in victory. Pray for our nation, our healthcare workers and our leaders. And Lord, that you would just continue to uh, move and reign and, and all these situations. We look to you, Lord, in all these things because you're God and you're in control, Lord. And God, we pray for your divine wisdom, direction, and guidance and your blessings, Lord, upon uh, your people, Father. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just a few things we, we want to just continue to remind you of. Uh, just continue to be reaching out, those that are in need, those uh, that, you know, keep in con connection with those that uh, are part of our fellowship, those that aren't part of our fellowship. Just uh, continue to reach out and minister to people during this time. Uh, that's so important. Also, uh, continue in your giving. Uh, we're continuing to support ministries. We're continuing to keep ministries going. And so we would ask you to continue you for you to be faithful in your giving during this time as well. Uh, also, uh, we all, as you do, anticipate and look forward to the time we can get together again and see each other face to face. And I know you do as well. And we're excited about the day we'll be able to do that and continue to uh, be lifting up uh, your pastors as uh, for wisdom, direction, and guidance, and we'd appreciate it. We love you. We're praying for you. God bless you until we see each other again.